Hello, this is Grace Nasrallah from Busy Reflections. Today's topic is the topic of importance to all Canadians. We will be discussing the topic of uh, tax liability of CARB recipients. And today I have with me Bakr Bahati. Uh, thank you for, for being with me, uh, Bakr. My pleasure, Grace. Uh, the topic today is uh, uh, very trendy. Uh, it is uh, one of yeah. the uh, most trendy uh, topics, CRB and CRB. Uh, very great. <laughs> so my question today for you is, what are the tax implications for the recipients of CERB and CRB? Thank you, Grace. As uh, we all know that uh, when for the first time the government launched CRB or CERB after uh, this pandemic broke out in Canada, so many people were under the impression that probably it's a non-taxable relief. But later on, it was uh, made clear by the government that CERB, that is Canada Emergency Response Benefit, is uh, basically a taxable financial uh, benefit. So it means people have to pay tax on it. But somehow government did not deduct any tax at source from SERB payments. Later when SERB was uh, converted into CRB or Canada Recovery Benefit, then the CRA started deducting 10% of the total uh, payment as advanced tax or tax at source. Now with reference to tax implications, as we know that both SERB and CRB are uh, taxable relief or taxable benefits. So in our 2020 tax return, that is the first tax return after the uh, pandemic, everybody who has received SERB or CRB payment, whether it's a single payment or all 14 payments, they have to report all these payments as income in their T1 personal income tax return 2020. And of course, they are liable to pay tax. And we know that, I mean, even at the lowest uh, slab, within the Canadian tax system, it is 15% at the federal level. And if we just talk about Ontario taxes, it is 5.05%. So together it would be around 20% tax that every recipient has to pay on this uh, income relief. Great. Um, now, what is the minimum and maximum income tax that may be payable by different recipients in their 2020 tax return? Okay, as uh, we know that, I mean, there could be a variety of situations. When we file our taxes, it all depends on whether we are filing as an individual, whether as an employee or a self-employed person, whether we have, for example, certain tax deductible expenses like uh, medical expenses, educational expenses, tuition fees, et cetera, et cetera, or even your professional dues. So, I mean, there's no one right answer for that. But what we can do is we'll just simplify some of the assumptions to make these calculations simple. So what we do is we assume that we are doing calculation for an individual who has no spouse, just to make things uh, simple. And of course, there are no taxable, uh, tax deductible expenses like, uh, I mean, dues for uh, professional bodies or membership or like, uh, for example, uh, medicine related expenses or tuition fees. So if we assume that everybody has received all the seven payments of CERB and seven payments of CRB in year 2020, as we know that because these 14 payments were made in 2020, except for CERB last payment that would include two days for year 2021, but we'll just include in 2020. So the gross income for each recipient would be $21,000. I'm talking about the income related to CERB payment, that is $14,000 under CERB and $7,000 of fortnightly payment, total seven payments under CRB. So the, the sum total would be $21,000. Now we know that for year 2020, the basic personal amount has been enhanced or increased to $13,229 uh, at the federal level. And for the Ontario taxes, this has been increased to $10,783. So if we deduct this basic personal amount, the taxable income for federal taxes would be $7,000. $771, while for Ontario taxes, this would be $10,217. Now, the federal tax rate at the lowest lab is 15%. This would bring the tax payable, that the federal tax payable at $1,166, while at the uh, Ontario basic lab is at 5.05%, and this will bring the tax liability to 560. If we just add up the two, 
So the total tax payable by someone who is living in the province of Ontario for year 2020 on based on these assumptions would be around $1,682. But as we know that while making CRB payments, the government or the CRS started deducting 10% tax at source. So people already paid $700 tax on these seven payments. So we're going to deduct this 700 payment that is advanced tax at source. So the net tax payable would be about $982. Now, we, we just changed these assumptions as for a second scenario. If you, we remember that uh, when serve was introduced later, the government allowed people to work also and they could earn up to $1,000 per month. So they would remain eligible for serve. Similarly, for CRB, the government introduced a reform that people could work while receiving CRB. And the maximum amount that they can earn in 12 months period is $38,000. So based on these assumptions, I have just uh, modified my calculations a little bit. So instead of $21,000, we assume that the persons who receive the CERB as well as CRB, they were also working. So whether from employment or self-employment, for doing the tenure of SERB, they also received $1,000 per month income. And they also received, say, $1,500 per uh, uh, 15 days income or half month income during the CRB period. Why? Because if you just multiply $1,500 where the, uh, I mean, uh, the total 12 months period, you'll understand this to be around $36,000. So this is within $38,000 cap. So in this case, the basic personal amount would remain the same. That is $13,229 for federal taxes and $10,783 for Ontario taxes. But now the income has increased to $38,500 instead of $31,000 because this includes in income earned from employment and self-employment, as I just explained earlier. So under the federal tax, there is another benefit that is called Canada employment amount. The total amount is $1,245. We deduct this also. And the taxable income for federal taxes would come to about $24,026. And while for Ontario taxes, this would be around $27,717. So again, with 15% federal tax and 5.05% the Ontario tax, the total tax would come to about $5,004. And since we have already made $700 payment under CRB, the advanced tax, so we are going to deduct it. And uh, as I explained earlier that for CRB, the government includes a proviso that if there is any income above $38,000, so that income would, 50% of that income would be deductible. In our illustration, the total income comes to $38,500. So this $500 that is above $38,000, 50% of it would be added back as your income. That would be $250. So the net tax payable in this scenario would be about $4,554. Just to make these calculations, I mean, uh, just to summarize the gist of these calculations, I would say that in the case of an individual who is not married because we made these assumptions just to make this calculation simple so the tax liability would fall somewhere between nine hundred dollar and four thousand five hundred dollar again i mean this is all based on the underlying assumptions but in individual cases the actual amount may be slightly different well this is very important information for us uh Mr. Bakker, I I have a question for you. For for someone yes. like me who is self-employed, uh, from mm -hmm. what I understand is uh, when when uh, the self-employed is getting CRB, they mm -hmm. will be paying tax for it. But with CRB, the government has already withdrawn taxes from it, right? But only 10% of tax government has deducted at source. But as I explained to you, even at the lowest level, the minimum tax payable by each Canadian living in the province of Ontario is 20.5%. So still you have to pay at least 10% additional tax. I mean, if we just leave aside the basic uh, personal amount. Okay. Yes. I yes. wanted to highlight mm -hmm. that part because I, I exactly. noticed as I'm talking to people, it is creating some confusion. Right. So people may be under the impression that 10% was their total tax liability. No, this is not the case. Your tax liability at the lowest slab would be at least 20% 20, uh, 20 so if 10% is deducted at source by the CRF for CRB, still 10% is payable on your part when you file your taxes. But again, depending upon the type of expenses you have incurred and your family composition, the, the liabilities would be different. But I mean, this is the minimum maximum threshold in a very simple case that I'm trying to explain. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the topic, for the explanation. 
uh, it's such a trendy topic these days, and uh, I uh, was so happy that we can cover it uh, and uh, put it out there for the people to benefit from. Thank you, my player. I hope you have benefited from the topic today. Uh, I want to end by inviting you to subscribe to Biz Reflections YouTube channel and click the bell button so that you can receive the videos as they get updated. And I will see you in the next video. Thank mm -hmm. you.